reminder to self. Don't stop on a gravelly hill to read a sign when you're hauling a trailer. Old Guy on a Bike presents 106 Days on the Road. Come join me on my travels from Newfoundland to Alabama and back again. So once again, leaving Frenchman's Cove on a wet day. And still have not totally seen the Buren. Don't know if we'll ever be back. Do you want to gas up and then eat? Or eat and then gas up? No, I was thinking the same thing. So I think gas and then eat. I like to do it that way too. That way, clean hands. You can lead on. Even though it's been damp on the Buren, we still had a couple of good nights at Frenchman's Cove Provincial Park. Which card gets to hit the moat this morning? Guess it's that one right there. Okay, we're cheating for breakfast this morning. McDonald's. So we're heading back up the Buren today to the Trans Canada then over to Brigus and Bay Roberts and Rob's cabin after that. I don't know which sequence of buttons I hit, but Robert and I are able to pair up our headsets. Oh, do I gotcha? Ha! Huh. <laughs> I don't know what I did. This, I, I, this is one of the things isn't dead, but you ready? All right. Okay, so bref, breakfast at McDonald's. It's just Robert and I. We'll be meeting up with other people later on this afternoon. And we're hoping, fingers crossed, that we're not going to catch any rain. We shall see how that goes. I have a pretty noisy helmet, I must admit. I can't hear you. 
All right. It's going to be too difficult for us to have a conversation. So I hear Robert tell his Cena, play music. <laughs> and sure enough, my phone starts playing my playlist, and I can't stop that till I get to Goobies. I know there's scenery out there, but I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot of it. It's going to be about an hour and a half before we get out to the Trans Canada. But in this kind of weather, it always seems like it's a lot longer. Of course, it's going to rain a little bit, but not enough to make us pull over and actually get on any other rain gear. Mind you, I just use my Transition 4 jacket anyway. But it's really easy to start daydreaming a bit. You've got to concentrate on the road, but your thoughts can sometimes wander a little. Sometimes you almost get outside of yourself while you're doing that. Kilometer after kilometer after kilometer. And then we're out at the Irving Big Stop at Goobies and it's time to take a break. Okay, believe it or not, we needed a hydration break uh, here at the Goobies Big Stop. And sure enough, there goes Rob and half of our crew on their way partially down the Buren to go to Vernon's Auto Museum. Something that Robert and I miss doing. We've run into enough fog to make it a snippet. Check the snippets out. The fog lifts a bit and you get to appreciate how many cars you were actually sharing the road with. We come into the very old town of Brigus. Lots of narrow streets, a few confusing one ways, and again, I'm having trouble finding the signage to the Brigus tunnel. I think I take a turn a little prematurely, being anxious with the GPS. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> well, Ollie, I've gotten us lost now. What's that? All right, I'll let you lead. The thought crosses my mind that I could turn around right here. But where would be the adventure in that? <clears throat> Who needs a dedicated ADV bike? And I see that Robert has stopped. To my right is about a 12 foot drop. Robert's come to the end of the road and it's an eight foot drop into someone's backyard. Adventures in trailering. We were just doing a sightseeing tour. <laughs> Honest. I didn't mean to lead Jim down the garden path. The graveyard Honest. path. The graveyard. It was one end or another. See how happy he is? Ecstatic. <laughs> Okay, there's the Briggs Tunnel. I don't know if we're gonna get down to it or not. So that was a half hour diversion, and we've ended up in this lovely company here. Actually, I do like old graveyards, and this one is an old one. Someday I wouldn't mind spending a few hours wandering around it. But no, we're off to the tunnel. I blew it with video down here. Anyway, the Briggest Tunnel was built for Captain Abram Bartlett. Through solid rock, it's about 80 feet long. Built by hand with, with black gunpowder.
He had it built so he could put a dock at the end of it and tie up his fishing boat in deeper water than elsewhere in the, in the harbor. Quite impressive. Brigus is another one of those towns where it would be really easy to spend half a day. But we don't have time for that. We've got to go find Rob's cabin in the woods. Pretty little town Brigus is. We're going to go over to Bay Roberts and pick up a few supplies for supper. Rob had given me the GPS coordinates for the cabin. Now, after our little mishap with the GPS earlier, you might understand I'm a little hesitant. When I plugged it into my route, yep, it was able to find a spot down the side of a side road off a side road. Old pavement gives way to a dirt road. Well, dirt and gravel. It's not in bad shape. It actually looks like there's been a lot of new gravel put down and just recently graded. In some places, it's a little thick. Off the side of a side road, hmm. Rob had said it was a short distance down the dirt road. Well, at this point in the afternoon, it might just be me, but it doesn't feel like it's very short. It must be close. <laughs> Says five minutes in and uh, Kevin has just passed the Union Jack. Did you see a Union Jack? No, not yet. I guess we're going straight. Should be very close though. My, uh... Well, I'm showing destination in 30 meters. Yeah. And sure enough, Right around the corner is the Union Jack. I am now looking for the sign to Rob's cabin. 
It shouldn't be too far away. I think the directions were it's right after the Union Jack. Is it this one? I gotta slow down and stop looking for the sign. Oh, shit. Shit. Stopping is not a good idea. Seven hundred pounds of motorcycle, plus me, plus a trailer, on a hill in loose gravel. Well, the inevitable happens. So if you've been following along, how many tip overs is this? And I'm only a third of the way into my summer season. Now, one should be able to pick up their own motorcycle, but every time they demonstrate that, it's on a flat, hard surface. It's not on a hill going up with loose gravel underneath. With a little bit of ingenuity and Robert acting as a counterweight, we're able to get the bike back up. I get it to the top of the hill and get myself settled down for the last little bit into Rob's cabin. A big thank you to Rob for letting the group use the cabin. It was a little bit relaxing instead of setting up the tent. I do take a look at the driveway going down to the cabin and decide that, nah, I'm just gonna park the, the bike and the trailer at the top of the hill and carry down what luggage I need for the night. Good supper, good rest. And yep, we're gonna get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow is gonna be some more exploring with maybe a little less adventure. Thanks for coming along and we'll see you in the next video.